giving me a headache. So you can see I've finished off the, um, the yellow layer and I've shaded in the darkest parts of Mary's garment. That's using Caput Mortem, which is uh, this reddish brown pigment. That's that there, called Caput Mortem, sort of like the colour of dried blood. Um, with a little black in it, just to, to deepen it. And then I've used um, some lapis lazuli with a little black in it for the, for the blue parts. Again, just touching the darkest parts. Um, finish bringing up the hand um, and put some basic lines in for these garments. If you have the garments, taking your eye on a journey. It's very important at this stage, now you're gonna be doing it with your, um, with your brush to get thin, thick, thin. A substitute for Caput Mortem, um, well, you can always mix um, a sort of red ochre with some blue, some ultramarine, um, and maybe a little black to try and get a sort of, um, dark purpley colour. You can use, um, thank you, thank you. Um, you can use um, ultramarine as a substitute for lapis, um, but it's an, a synthetic pigment, so you need to put a bit of yellow ochre into it to, to knock it back. So now I'm going to continue with the face and I'm gonna begin by with mixing up some white um, this is zinc white. It's in the honey jar because it came in a big packet. So this is zinc white, not titanium. I do use titanium sometimes, but um, zinc white is more gentle. Um, and it mix, mixes in a more subtle way with other pigments. So now white is one of those pigments that seems to get into everything. So I have a try to use a separate one. Gentle your gentle cover. So gentle hue. Um, if you use titanium, it's very opaque and, and really quite solid. Um, so it, it's very aggressive as a color. So put a bit more egg into here. And we're going to need the white for lightening the skin tones and also for, um, oh, you've been looking at um, Nelson's uh, video about zinc. That's for oil paint. That's, uh, that's why you've got to be really careful not to get yourself all confused. Um, with temper, I've not seen, seen any negative effects. So there's my white nicely mixed. Um, so if we do the, um, the eyes, first I'm going to take, um, some red ochre and I'm going to take some raw umber, some raw umber. I'm just going to take a little bit of it and mix it into the red so that you've got a sort of nutty colour. And then just putting in the iris.
Remember when we, we drew it, how we tuck it in at the top? And I've just left the, the center where the pupil will go. Now I'm going to take some zinc white and I'm just going to put some raw umber into that. And it's going to make this sort of gray color. You don't need very much of it, so. And this is going to be for round the iris. Now, one of the key things is not to fill the eye with white paint. If, if you do that, it has the effect of deadening the eye and makes it look very um, folky or childlike, a bit crude. So you see where I've put the, um, the white, this, this raw umber and white mix, it's sort of from about here Um, yes, English red light oak, uh, English red ochre light, um, or you can use any red really. It's a question of just mixing it with the right amount of raw umber to create the right shade. And I'm just making, going over a second time, more on this side and not on the other because if it's lighter on this side, it makes the eye look in that direction. So I need to do the same thing over here. Go all the way around first time. But again, more on on this side and don't make it white just this sort of pale gray and we're going to come back and put more white on later but at this stage we need to just um establish a foundation next thing i'm going to do is now mix up some raw umber And we're going to use the raw umber for the darkest lines. So for example, the eyebrows, the eyelash, the shadows in the nostrils and at the ends of the mouth. So You can see how little pigment you're using. Um, tempera is a very, very economical um, way of painting. Many of the earth colors are really quite cheap because they are just literally dirt and so dirt cheap. Um, now, I'm going to use a, a two. And I'm going to put uh, because if you try to do water gilding once you've got your painting on, then you end up ruining your painting because the gold will stick onto the uh, onto the paint and the fluid quite often will damage the paint as well. So with your, um, this is where you're going to make really good calligraphic, calligraphic, calligraphic lines. So where's my cloth? That's sat on, is it? 
anyway. So, I'm going to thin, thick, thin line. Do it once, and then I'm going to repeat it, but not quite so far along. So instead of starting there, I'm now going to start here. And you can see on the original, there's got this really, really strong line on there. So um, it's, the base is, is quite thick for this one. You see how big that is. And then I'm going to use Yeah, yeah, too dark at this stage. This is the the foundation. So now doing the pupil. And then here, another thin, thick, thin line, like that. And then the nostril, just a little thin, thick, thin line going under the nostril like that. And you see how now, Oh, yeah, thanks, Amos. Yeah. Um, so now you see how the that shadow has just made the, the nose pop. And then at the corner of the mouth there, you see the effect that that's having. Do it at the other end. And in there. And in there. So you see it's beginning to give the mouth extra expression. Now, for the eyebrows, thin, thick, thick, thin. And bring those eyebrows into the, um, where they meet the, the brow there. They tuck in, and I'm just going to extend that down like that a little bit. Now, this isn't the final look. What we're doing is creating foundations that things build one on top of the other. And if you try and um, rush it by missing out these foundation stages, your icon will lose all its subtlety and gentleness and radiance. Um, so don't rush to get to the end. It would be much better to, to take your time and make sure you build these things up step by step. So now that face is beginning to, to look. So I'm now going to go back to the skin areas. And I'm going to take some yellow ochre. And I'm going to add a little bit of white like that. Now, that is much too white. So I'm now going to put some yellow ochre into here. And then I'm going to mix backwards and forwards between the two amounts. So this one is slightly darker and this one is slightly lighter and you can see that. Um, I might just put a bit more yellow into here. A mistake that um, a lot of people make is that they make the, the white too white too quickly and so you end up with this ghost-like effect. Question here, uh, when you say thin, thick, thick, thin, whilst painting the eyebrows, are you referring to the brush handling? Yes, I'm talking to the uh, stroke, that it's thin and then thick. 
Um, calligraphic lines are very, very, very important for giving iconography this elegance, but at the same time, this asceticism. Um, next question, how many layers of yellow ochre have you put to achieve such a smooth image? I've probably given that probably about three complete coverings, as it were, but I'm actually, I've put more where it's lightest, which is giving a slight modelling. Now I'm going to my darker of the two highlights, and I'm just going to check how light this is going to be. So the nose is a good place to start because that's one of the very brightest parts. So if it if it's too bright, it's it's not going to um, uh, if it's too bright is not going to settle onto the layer underneath, but that's just about right. You can see it's just lightened it. Um, this is um, the Italian gold ochre light that I'm using. It's a form of yellow ochre. So take the right one. So now I'm going to go back. And I'm not going to cover so much as I co covered with just the yellow ochre, but it's exactly the same principles. So I'm putting it on, blending out. So if we look at the lips, all sort of comes up to a brighter point here. That's comes from round the nose and round to here. And see how that's sort of making the, the lip protrude slightly. It's remember we've got those teeth underneath there. And I've got my example here, so I'm not just making this up. I've got it in front of me. So, coming from round the nostril. And this bottom lip, really important. Bring that where it's coming forward at the bottom. Bring it round to there. And then bring that lighter area down, but not all the way covering all the yellow. Let the yellow blend through to the that darker patch there. And this has this funny mouth. So I'm not covering all of that. Um, you can see where that proplasmos is still showing there. So I'm starting where it's brightest and then working down and across. And that's giving nice transition. Let's take there. Then go on over that again. I want to show you how how that that comes up because you can see it's sort of drying back and then you sort of seem to lose it. So you, you've got to be patient. And know that it will eventually work. So it's giving it a shape like that. And then here,
fill that up and then just blend it onto the side of the nose. Now I'm not dividing up this area into the um, wrinkles just yet. Um, that that's going to come at the next layer, which will be with more white. I'm building up where the cheeks were. And if you're wondering where, where to do it, if you think of when you get older and where those wrinkles are, it will be around there. So bring the white up to there, bring the white down to there and let them sort of fade between the two. When building up the form or modeling the form as you are now, is it normal for certain areas of modeling to be higher in texture than other areas with less modeling? Yes, because you're gonna have more paint in certain areas than than others, so it, it it will as it were create a little mountain. Now need a bit more of this paint. What I I'm not going to do the whole of it. I'm just going to bring this side of the face all the way up. So let me just make a little bit more of. This paint. Again, going over this area again, not as much as the previous layer. So I'm bringing it up to that shape of the eye. So this, that's covering all of it. But here where it's blending down, I'm only taking it to about here and then it, it, it blends to the other layer which itself blends with the orange red layer, orange yellow layer, sorry and then to the proplasmos. So as you're thinking about, well, where do I put this paint? Think of, of, of the face in nature and what's underneath. So you know that the chin's going to protrude forward, so that's going to be in the light, and underneath the lip will be in the darkness. So it will have less. Right, I'm going to move to the next white now. With next white. The, sorry, no, I'm not. I need to do that eye. So with the eyelid, it's two strokes, a thin, thick, thin at the bottom, and a thin, thick across the top like that. So you can just see that there is two lines there and then for a minute this lower lid get this a nice elegant precise line there, like that. And this is like light is flowing out of the eye. So eventually this will be the brightest area of the whole icon. So the eye, it's almost like light is filling up inside the eye and then cascading over. Nice precise shape there. Then to go over these again. Ten minutes left, so I better. Just 
some of this. So we'll go to the lighter one now. Again, not covering so much as the, the first layer. So let's do this um, sheet. So put the paint on where it's brightest like that. Dampen your brush and then just tease out the edge like that. So you see how that's beginning to create um, a curve. And here, what this bright So put it on where it's brightest, then dampen your brush, just tease the ends out like that. Especially onto the side of the nose like that. So you see now we're beginning to get the face emerging. And it's one of the things I just love about tempera is the way it just begins to emerge. It's so subtle. Now I will work on this before the next session, I hope, and be able to have covered all of the, what size press I keep moving. This is a two and this is a, a one. So I'm going backwards and forwards between the, the two. Bring that up. What happens is it just suddenly reaches the point. Are you following the form every pass or hatching, cross hatching? It looks like an organic combination of both. You're quite right, Pineda. It is an organic combination of both. Um, depending on, on the, the area that I'm working on, um, depends on the, the type of stroke that I'll employ. Um, if it works, all to the good. Okay, now I'm going to take more white. And now I'm conscious of the shapes that I'm going to lie on the top of there. And doing a little bit of a sort of cross hatch here, which is a, another way to control that blend. This particular to icon writing that the layers of temper gradually reveal like. Um, it's certainly um, intrinsic to iconography, um, but it's also, I think, part of the, the, 
the innate quality of, of tempera um, that it enables translucences and works through these very um, thin layers, um, which is perhaps why it's, you know, if you think of Botticelli or something like that and some of the faces that he, he painted. Now this eyelid, um, just in the middle, thin, thick, thin, but not at the back. And underneath here, thin, thick, thin, but not from here, sort of halfway along. Maybe we'll put more on here. So laying the foundation now for the um, highlights that we'll, we'll end up putting there. Look very carefully at your model where they put the building up the these highlights. And then you add some more white and build it up to the next stage. Now we're going to run out of time. Um, both now and also in terms of like the amount that I can demonstrate for this course because um, we just have tomorrow and that's the end of the five days it's gone quickly um, and had some very nice comments from many of you saying how much you've appreciated and thank you for those um, so I'm thinking that um, I might do another course soon um, Oh, great. Thanks, <laughs> Royce. Um, maybe instead of trying to do a whole icon, but um, working on particular features or, or something like that, or garments or something like that, and maybe doing... Now, this is a bit too white. See how white that is. So what you can do, um, I'm going to do this in less than a minute, is go back to my yellow ochre and do a wash. Okay, brilliant, thanks Phil. Well, I'll think about that and, and let you know. Um, but anyway, folks, have a wonderful evening. Um, we've got about a minute left, I think, till the, till the cameras will close on us. Um, You see, I'm just knocking the this back because I just found it a bit too white and uh, pastel. Um, and as long as you put this layer on really thinly, this yellow, you see how it sort of pulled it all back together again. So we're not using the um, the unity of the piece. So I'll build the rest of this up um, before tomorrow, I hope, um, and. Um, to see everyone tomorrow. So 9.30 UK time. Um, so um, just check that with your, your alarm clocks. And those of you who are getting up at three o'clock in the morning, it's a wonderful Lenten penance. You're doing marvelous. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, everybody. God bless. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. Good night. Night. Thank you. Thank you.